Today, we will find out how this bottle is connected to Alka-Seltzer and Flintstone vitamins on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. Today's story is about Dr. Franklin Miles. He was born in 1845 in Ohio. His family had been in America since the 1600s. His family was one of the founding families in Ohio, and his grandmother, Laura, was the first white child born in Cleveland. Now, Miles originally wanted to go into law, but he changed his mind, and he ended up going to several prestigious colleges, and eventually he graduated from Rush Medical College in Chicago in 1874. The following year, in 1875, at age 30, he moved to Elkhart, Indiana, and he started his practice. We see in 1880, he's listed as a physician. Now he wrote several papers and is credited with investigating several important discoveries involving the eye, brain, heart, and nervous system. He married Ellen and they had three kids, but then she died at the age of 30. About 14 years later, he married Elizabeth and they had one baby girl who's not listed here, who died at the age of eight. And this Louise was his adopted daughter and Louise lived to be 98. So in 1880, we start seeing ads pop up for his new medicine called New Heart Cure. This says, thousands of people are slowly poisoning themselves, weakening their hearts by the use of tea, coffee, tobacco, and alcohol. These are heart whips, causing it to beat rapidly, thus gradually wearing it out, causing shortness of breath when exercising, pains in the side and shoulder, hunger and faint spells, Finally, swelling of the ankles and sudden death. Okay then. The following week in the paper, it reads, What Bell and Edison are to the telephone and electricity, Dr. Franklin, the well-known specialist in nervous diseases, is to the nervous system. Among his numerous discoveries, his restorative nervine is undoubtedly one of the greatest. He's giving away free trial bottles. Here is our first known ad for the nervine. Now I keep looking at this word and I want to say nervine, but other videos that I saw pronounce it nervine. Now the following week, it's actually listed in the paper as Dr. Miles Restorative Nervine. Dr. Miles Medical Company was incorporated in 1885. Dr. Miles had two partners, George Compton and Albert Beardsley. Now quick sidetrack, a couple fun facts about his partners. Beardsley's uncle was the founder of Elkhart, Indiana. Beardsley was married to Elizabeth and they had one baby named Ruth and she died at seven months old. Beardsley worked at a dry goods store when he was younger and he saved his money eventually purchasing the store when he was 23. When he was 42, he joined the Miles Company and he remained general manager until he died. He was also a state representative in 1899 and a state senator from 1905 to 1907. In 1910, him and his wife built a mansion that they called Ruth Muir, which still stands and is now a museum. There's also a Beardsley Avenue in Elkhart. Now, George Compton lived in Elkhart his entire life. His dad died when he was four. He found himself working in Beardsley's dry goods store for a couple years. His health wasn't the best, but at some point he found himself going back to his home that he was born in, which was on a farm, and he fixed it up and lived there. His obituary says that he was vice president of the company at the time of his death. And there's also a Compton Avenue in Elkhart. So getting back to the timeline, in 1884, Miles began a publication called Medical News, which was what a lot of the medicine companies were doing back then, it was a little packet with helpful information for everyday matters. It probably looked a little bit like this, while it was also advertising for their product the entire time. And I guess medical news is still being published? Or is this just another publication with the same name? I'm not sure. Anyways, here's a photo of Dr. Miles' medical company about this time, about 1889. It was about this time that Beardsley actually purchased the interest of the Dr. Miles Company. Here's an 1890 ad. It says, Mrs. Pickerel narrowly escaped the insane asylum. She's had headaches, 
palpitations and sleeplessness for years, and for three years she's had convulsions, sometimes as many as 50 a night. Physicians were unable to help her, but after six weeks of using Dr. Miles' restorative Nervine, she was entirely cured. In 1891, Miles established the Grand Dispensary Company to take over for his general practice, which was now distributing to every state. In 1894, Miles entered the Nervine into the World's Fair. This newspaper article filled the entire page, and around the perimeter of the page were all these testimonials with names and pictures of all these satisfied customers. In 1896, another testimonial. This dude says that he came down with typhoid fever and he was bedbound for seven months. He said he's six foot five, 270 pounds, and he had lost 140 pounds and he was very weak. After trying everything else, the Nervine helped him improve, he's never felt better, and now he weighs his 270 again. <laughs> There's just testimonial after testimonial throughout the years. This continues on through almost all the years that he was selling this. Basically, the only ads that he ran were testimonials. Now, this 1903 directory has the company, Dr. Miles Medical Company. It also has the dispensary, and it shows George Compton as vice president, Beardsley is secretary and treasurer and manager, and the address it shows is on West Franklin. They built this building in 1902, and this photo is from about 1910. And in 1910, one of the partners, George Compton, died at the age of 60. By 1910, Dr. Miles is about 65 now, and his kids are grown. His son, Charles Franklin Miles, is married, and he's just starting a family, and it shows that he's secretary at the company now. This 1910 directory shows that Beardsley's nephew, named Andrew Hubble, is also a secretary at the company as well. Now Andrew, nicknamed Hub, had started as a bottle washer and he worked his way up, eventually becoming president of the company. He ended up working there for about 35 years. In 1906, Miles moved to Florida due to health problems and he thought that the weather in Florida would improve his health. He settled in Fort Myers and saw serious potential for agriculture so he purchased several thousand acres along the Caloosahatchee River and he cleared it. And it says that he enjoyed experimenting with a scientific approach to planting different fruits and vegetables. Now I'm not really sure how involved he is with the Miles Company at this point. In 1913, he organized the Franklin Miles Association, which was a Florida agriculture corporation. He devoted a lot of time to studying how to improve the soils. He ran a school for truckers, which is different than what you're thinking. It was actually a school for learning how to prepare land for cultivation and the spraying of crops. So now we're up to 1924 and Beardsley dies at the age of 76. Now here's a 1925 Florida article talking about how Miles has built a bat colony to help control mosquitoes. And a few years later, in April 1929, Miles died at the age of 83. It says he had a long illness, making him an invalid for the last year. He had been president of five companies between Indiana and Florida, and the director of two others. His body was sent back to Elkhart, Indiana for burial. Now, apparently he had huge mango groves by the time he died. This article states that there was a project in the works, a road along the waterfront in Fort Myers, to be beautified by planting palms and tropical trees, and they wanted to name the road Miles Boulevard. It said that they were looking to seek approval from the city commissioner. Well, I looked, but I didn't find a Miles Boulevard in Fort Myers. Maybe it's been renamed since 1929, but I did find a Miles Avenue in Elkhart, which was the road that the Miles factory was on. So since the founding fathers of this company are passed away, we know that the company is in the hands of the next generation. It was Beardley's nephew, Albert Hubble. It was his idea to start moving from sedatives to more innovative drugs. During the 20s, effervescent medicine became increasingly a more interesting concept. He encouraged his scientists to look into making the Nervine into an effervescent tablet. Then he thought to make a tablet combining aspirin and bicarbonate of soda to treat colds. 
It took a few years, but Alka-Seltzer was introduced to the market in 1931. In 1938, they built a new 1 million square foot factory. Between 1902 and 1942, the company had published all kinds of almanacs, calendars, joke books, song books, candy books, and it looks like even paper dolls for the kids. The last time that I see an ad for Dr. Miles' restorative Nervine is in 1932, but it was sold under a different name until the mid-1960s. In the 1940s, some new vitamins were introduced, such as one-a-day vitamins for adults, and a kid's vitamin called Chox. And Chox became Bugs Bunny vitamins in 1971. Flintstone vitamins came out in 1968. Now I kind of want one of these little Flintstone bottles. Aren't they cute? In 1932, the name of the company was changed from Dr. Miles Medical Company to Dr. Miles Laboratories. And then three years later, it changed to Miles Laboratories. The company stayed independent until 1977 when it became a subsidiary of Bayer. In 1992, Bayer moved the headquarters of Miles Company from Elkhart, Indiana to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And in 1995, they eliminated the Miles brand from all the products. Now, I'm not sure if there's a sect of the Miles Company that's still operating because according to the company history, it says the descendants of the three original partners, Miles, Beardsley, and Compton, still hold important executive positions in the company today. Bayer sold the old Elkhart factory in 2002. And in 2003, an organization called Feed the Children moved in. Then in 2012, the building was demolished Apparently there was a time capsule buried on the site when the building was complete in 1938. So just before the demo, there was a time capsule opening ceremony where old employees, descendants, and other members of the city got together to open it. They found old records, like record player records. I believe they said that there was some radio programs on them. Magazines and newspapers with ads for Alka-Seltzer old journals and old photos and a lot of the things in the capsule got damaged from water but they said that they would restore whatever they could so my bottle is a blown bottle from the 1880s or 1890s lots of bubbles it's a tooled top and this was the large bottle which would have been a dollar as opposed to the small bottles that were 25 cents i did find a few commercials so i'm going to leave you with those and i hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you on the next one. A new day dawns in the city. A day when a lot of little irritations may mount up, make you feel tense. Let Miles Nervine in new carry-along capsules help you feel calm. It's formulated to help ease that feeling of nervous tension. Take as directed, avoid excessive use. Also in effervescent tablets, and liquid form, Miles Nervine. Time for chocks! Mother, listen to the clocks. Come into the land of chocks. We'll have fun and find out why. Chocks brand is the one to buy. I'm a panda bear with good news to share about vitamins called chocks. They're just great to chew, fresh fruit flavor too. So good! I'm a talking horse, and my tip, of course, is to always count on chocks. Pillow shaped just so, colors all aglow. All yours with chocks. Now, Mother, you work hard, we know, to fix good food that makes them grow. But do they eat what they like and leave the rest? Give them chocks each day, and you've done your best. Chocks ensures them, yes, indeed, with all the vitamins they'll normally need. Mother, listen to the clocks. Morning is the time for chocks. <laughs> You worked too hard, you ate too much, the cheesecake made you greedy. Let your aching head and stomach hear this message from old Speedy. Alka-Seltzer, plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz, oh, what a relief it is. Those Speedy bubbles relieve your upset stomach and headache fast. For acid indigestion alone, Alka-Seltzer gold. Oh, what a relief it is. What a relief.